So I've been uh, officiating uh, weddings uh, during this COVID-19 pandemic. Okay, and uh, y y if you see in the picture there, uh, the couples wearing a mask, okay, you know, to protect them from themselves from, from the pandemic. And not just the couples, right? The guests who would come, they need to wear um, a, a mask. It's as if that, that's part of the dress code right now to attend a wedding or a wedding reception. And it's so nice just really to attend a wedding and uh, a wedding reception. There's, there's um, a lot of uh, preparation needed, you know, uh, to go to a wedding or to a wedding reception. Uh, of course, we get an invitation, right? And there it says, what is the attire? What is the dress code? So it could be formal, semi-formal, casual, whatever. You know, if it's at the beach, you wear a Hawaiian shirt or whatever, right? And uh, so there's a lot of preparation needed. Huh? You, know, you want to buy the best dress for, for the ladies, the best suit, and, uh, because you want to look presentable and, uh, and you want, in a way, you want to stand out also, right? When you go to a party, a uh, reception, you want, kind of want to stand out. That's why, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that's why for the ladies, you're kind of embarrassed when you go there and you see someone wearing the same dress. Is, is, is that correct? Like, you, you're embarrassed and, uh, you know, and, uh, because, of course, you want to be wearing that dress alone in that reception. I guess for us guys, you know, uh, we, we don't care much uh, because suit is a suit, right? But especially for me, a priest, uh, before, w when I was a seminarian or even before joining the seminary, I would be uh, so conscious of uh, what I would wear, the suit, it should be matching, uh, nice. But as a priest... You go to a reception and you just wear your clerical shirt and then just wear a black suit. It's easy. It's simple. So I attended a, a 40th, uh, 40th or 45th wedding anniversary reception. Okay, so this happened last year. I think the couple is here. So I went there and uh, so I just grabbed my black suit in a, in a suit bag, right? So I brought it there and then... So when I came to the, to the reception, I, I took off the, 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 my suit there, and I noticed that it's so wrinkled. And I was like, oh my goodness, I couldn't go back to the house and iron it. It's going to be too late, right? So I went to the reception, <laughs> my suit so wrinkled, and I was like so conscious that a lot of people would be looking at me so I was like, when I was like walking in the reception, I was like trying to straighten it out. <laughs> Just to straighten it out, right? And uh, so uh, it, 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 it's, uh, it's, it's a funny thing that happened, you know, to me. And, uh, but I'm glad, you know, no, no, one, no one like uh, embarrassed me or something. So in today's gospel, there's also a wedding, okay? And in this, in this gospel, he says, you know, there was a king who organized, who, who was... Uh, organized a wedding banquet for his son and he invited people but a lot of people said no you know they're busy with their farm they're busy with other things they couldn't go so the king asked the slave invite everyone on the streets to come so both the good and the bad came and then the king went to the wedding feast and he saw some somebody there who was not in the proper dress code and and you see here in the picture he asked the slaves to take that guests out of the wedding reception. Now, we see here about, uh, the, 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 this is the parable of the wedding feast. And to understand this parable, we need to know the backstory. How many of you here are familiar with these popular TV shows, The Lost? Lost, okay, it's a popular TV show if you want to watch it. Uh, the other one is This Is Us. So the, the, the loss is more of an action, um, suspense, adventure story. This Is Us is more of a drama. Uh, and then, of course, the other one is The Chosen. You know, it's about the story of Jesus and his disciples. Both, the, all three of these uh, 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 TV shows, they're excellent. Well done. If you haven't got a chance to watch it, I encourage you to watch it. And one common about these this three TV shows is that they do a backstory. You know, like, like they go back to the past and explain uh, where the character was coming from. 
or what happened in the past so that you will understand what's happening in the present. So it's the same also like that. In today's parable, for us to be able to understand this, we need to go back. The past few weeks, the parable. The first one is, I don't know if you remember, two weeks ago, what was the parable that was on? It's about the parable of the two sons. Remember? Remember that? Uh, that's from Matthew 21, verse 28 to 32. You know, uh, it's about the father who asked uh, uh, two of their child, uh, two, two, his two sons to go to the, to the vineyard to, to work. You know, the first said no, uh, and yet later on he said yes, right? And then the second son said yes, but later on did not go. Okay? And this story talks about uh, repentance, the need for repentance. So the second son who said no first repented and worked for the vineyard. Now, the second, the last week's parable is about the parable of the tenants in the vineyard. And that's from Matthew 21, verse 33 to 45. Okay? And there it talks about you know, the landlord asking his slaves to get the fruit uh, that is produced in the vineyard. And yet these tenants couldn't produce, couldn't give the fruit of his vineyard. In the Bible, there's a t- two book ends in the Bible. The Genesis is the first book, and then the last book is Revelations. So two book ends. It's like Genesis is the introduction, Revelation is the conclusion. If you're a writer, you would write a very good introduction so to catch the attention of the reader, so that the reader would continue reading. And of course, the conclusion would also be very good. It's like the climax of the story. And in, in, in the Bible, it's, there's two bookends there in Genesis. And in the, the two bookends there in Genesis chapter, chapter 2, verse 24, it talks about a wedding. Okay? In Genesis chapter 2, verse 24, it says, Therefore a man leaves his father and his mother and clings to his wife, and they become one flesh. The writer here is pertaining to Adam and Eve. Okay? Now, the last book in the Bible, it talks about also of a wedding. Okay? In, uh, in Revelation chapter 19, verse 7, it says, Let us rejoice and exult and give him the glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. So two weddings. Two weddings in the, in, in the beginning of the scripture and a wedding again at the end. And there's going to be a wedding, right? Uh, so there, there are two, two weddings here. There, there is a dress code that is needed to go to heaven. Okay? And uh, as I've said, in the, in the parable of the tenants of the vineyard, one of the fruit that the Lord wants to see of us is holiness. Okay? Because Jesus asked us, be holy for my Father in heaven is holy. And you see here in heaven, there's, there's this uh, people dressed in white. And the symbolism of that is our baptismal cloth that we wear when we were baptized, right? We were given this white garment, a symbolism that baptism has cleansed us from original sin and particular sin. We've been cleansed from this sin. But after baptism, of course, we would commit sin. And what would happen is that we would stain our soul. That's why it's really very important to go to confession regularly, okay? Because that's what confession do. It cleanses our soul so that our garments will be as white as a wool. And that's, you know, that, that's what we see here in heaven. And in Revelation chapter 7, verse 13 to 14, it says there, Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, robed in white? And where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. These are the people, the fruit, you know, people, God saw the fruit of holiness in them. The second thing that the... uh, the fruit that the Lord wants to see us, to see in us, is love. Okay? 
two greatest commandments is that love, love your God with all your heart, mind, soul, body, and soul. And the second commandment is to love your neighbor as yourself. That's another fruit that the Lord wants to see in each and every one of us. And whenever we, we, we love, it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 15, for we are a fragrance of Christ to God. Our love, it's like a, a, it's like a perfume that goes, that goes up, okay? Now, going back to the wet, go, attending to a re wedding reception, the white robe is like wearing a beautiful dress and a beautiful suit, okay? So that's the symbolism of that. In, in the perfume, you know, it's, it's so nice to go to a reception, you know, ladies would wear uh, perfume, the men would wear cologne, right? It, it, it's just beautiful. And that's the thing. Whenever we're, lo we're loving God and loving others, it's a fragrance or an aroma that goes up to heaven. Now, the third, the third fruit that the Lord wants to see each and every one of us, as I've said last week, are the souls that we need to bring to heaven. Okay? Uh, Jesus died on the cross, and one of the last words, he says, I thirst. I thirst not for water, but for souls. Your soul and the soul that you will bring to heaven. And those souls are like jewels that you will wear to, to a wedding reception, right? Ladies, you like to wear earrings, necklace, bracelet, or whatever. Men likes to wear beautiful watches and uh, everything. Those are our jewels, okay? And in... in Isaiah chapter 61, verse 10, I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God, for he clothed me with garments of salvation, this is the white garment, and arrayed me in a robe of his righteousness. As a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewel. So that's, that's the beauty of it, right? You know, we need to be prepared. You know, we, we need to, just like in the parable of the two sons, we need to become the second son, not the first son, the second son who said no first to God and yet repented, okay, and then went to the vineyard. But it's not just repenting, but also seeing the fruit that the Lord wants to see in us. You know, and, and, and of course, that, that, that's it, that's the holiness that the Lord wants to see in us, and that's the dress, the, the, the white garments that we're all wearing. And, and of course, the Lord wants to see the, the aroma, the fragrance, you know, as we love God and love others. And the third thing is the jewels, the souls that we will bring to heaven. So, as I've said, there's a wedding banquet that's going to happen. When the Lord comes in His second coming, there's going to be a wedding, a wedding between Jesus and his church, us, the bride, of the, the, bride, the bride of Christ. Now, if there's a wedding, then there must be a courtship stage and an engagement stage, right? You don't get married at once with, with your spouse, right? There's, an, there's a courtship stage, and there's also an engagement stage. Courtship stage is getting to know. That's why we need to get to know Jesus. You know how much he loves us you know and and by doing that you know we would fall in love with him and follow him as his disciple and that's being in the engagement stage and after that you know when the lord comes then we will be able to go we will be invited and go to the wedding banquet and because the greatest disaster the greatest disappointment that we would have is that we will not be able to enter heaven because we did not repent from our sin and we did not bear the fruit that the Lord wants to see in us. You know, as priests, we, know we, we wear different hats. We're priests, we're sometimes we're counselors, uh, sometimes we're, uh, we're preachers also, uh, we're fathers, we're spiritual father. But there's also one role that as priests we need to do, and that is... We are wedding coordinators. You know, as wedding coordinators, you prepare the couple for the wedding, right? You know, whatever they need. 
you know, during the wedding itself and also at the reception. You prepare them. And that's the role of the priest, to prepare you for the wedding banquet. And when you go to the wedding banquet, you are not just the guest. You are the bride of Christ. Okay. Now, I would like you to meditate on this scripture passage, which is on Revelation chapter 19, verse 9. It says there, Blessed are they are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. Mm -hmm.